Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. Dimitri Baval lost his right to complain about the decision. And the good thing about it is he's not complaining. Uh, we know Eddie Hearn is pissed off. He's going to always complain. But that's his job. You can't take Eddie Hearn serious. His major downfall is he'll come out and tell you that it's all, don't hate the player, hate the game. I'm doing my job. I'm a talker. So not even Eddie Hearn believes Dimitri Baval won that fucking fight. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I thought Bertabia, because of his power, would be a problem. But I did say I think Baval, if you force me to pick somebody, maybe Baval can, can outbox him. I said, but, you know, it's a 50-50 fight. But I just threw that out there to have fun during the live. I told him. I don't know who's going to win. Like, that's how close it was uh, as far as the matchup. But you saw when the fight took uh, started off, you could see that, okay, Baval, it, when he wanted to, he could easily outbox Berta Bia, but he was moving a lot. And there were people on the live who were saying, damn, I don't know if Baval can keep up this work rate and, and move like this as you get into the later rounds. And let me tell you something. He was able to move around. He still had stamina. The problem is he stopped letting his hands go. That he, he, it was like having, you know, you have internet, and sometimes the, connect, the connectivity is there. Then it's not. It's called intermittent service. Dimitri Baval had intermittent service in that goddamn ring last night. Okay? Now let me show you something. Because I to, I've been saying this. With uh, Oshaki Foster, when he fought... Not Conceição. There's what Conceição. But anyway, he he was very economical in his punch output. Oshaki Foster. Um, Conceição threw a lot of punches, and Oshaki Foster lost. And I was that's what I started saying. I was like, you know what these fighters need to do? Don't try to uh, outland. Don't don't try to outpower no one. Fighters today need to start out throwing their opponents to win fights. I said that. Some people thought I was joking. I said, no, I'm serious. If you out throw another fighter, it forces these judges to make a decision. Even if the other person, if you throw 50 punches around, they throw 20. And they land all 20 of theirs. And you throw 50 and you land 15. It, you're probably going to look like you're doing more damage. But but this is what went wrong for Baval. Same shit, okay? So here we go. CompuBox, Berta B of and Baval. Let me uh, make this a little bit larger for y'all, right? Look, look, look right here. In the first round, Baval threw 39, Berta B of threw 33. These are total punches. Second round, Baval threw 47, Berta B of threw 41. I had it 2 0 for Baval. Third round, Berta B of threw 68, Baval threw 42. I had it 2 1 for Baval. Fourth round, it was Berta Bia through 55, Baval through 31. I had it 2-2 at this point. Then in the fifth round, sixth round, I had it 4-2. Then we went into um, the seventh. I think I had it 6-2. And then I eventually, I ended up somewhere where it was like 7-3 seven, seven, or something. But anyway, if you look at it, First round, Berta Biev, uh, uh, Baval outthrows Berta Biev. The second round, Baval outthrows Berta Biev. Third round, Berta Biev outthrows Baval. Fourth round, Berta Biev outthrows Baval. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Berta Biev outthrew Baval. So Baval only outthrew Berta Biev in two rounds. He only outthrew him in two rounds, people. So you can get mad all you want and say, well, those aren't effective punches. It doesn't, and look, he outthrew him. And I, and I did recognize that um, Berta Bia was throwing, I was calling him like, like um, pity pat jabs. Yeah, I, was like, he, I, was like, he, I was calling it tap, tap, boom. I was like, he's just kind of tap, tapping around the ring. It was nothing really hard, but then every now and then he would explode with a big shot. But it was, Berta Bia was more tap, 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 not really, uh, nothing hard. Nothing too effective, nothing significant, but he he kept working, but he wasn't really it wasn't really anything effective, 
And then you would see that uh, Baval was waiting because what he wanted Berta Bia was to be more aggressive, more show more pressure so he could counter him. But when the thing is, when Baval exploded, Baval looked so spectacular. Like his combinations were so crisp, so fast, and he was landing. And he was pushing Berta Bia back. But you've seen in several rounds where Baval was pushing him back that Baval got countered. And then all of a sudden, the man who's coming forward is now going back. Let me tell you something. For those of you who've boxed, you would agree. When a motherfucker who's coming forward gets on that back foot out of, out of, after an exchange, that means they got hit with some shit. Okay? I'm telling you, this ain't me as a boxing fan. This is a motherfucker who's been in the ring. You don't have to be a professional fighter to know this. If you sparred numerous rounds, if you had an amateur, I don't care if you fought in fucking smokers. If you've been inside a ring and you fucking fought and you, 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 it, you know, it, it had to be more than one time though. But if you've been in the ring multiple times and you, you, you fought, you know, if it, it, when you get hit with some shit, that makes you stop. <laughs> that makes you think about some shit. Like, God damn, okay, I can't keep getting hit with that. And that's what happened to Bavol in a couple of rounds. But as far as the decision, I had that shit 8-4. I ain't going to lie. I had it the same way that judge had it, 116-112. I don't know what anybody else was watching. 7-5, I could see that. Because there was one round, I was like, God damn, that shit was close. They were all pretty pretty close, but nothing to where I was struggling scoring. But there was one round I had a, a tough time. I was like, God damn, that shit was pretty close, man. But um, other than that, I don't see what the issue is. But Baval... A rematch, Turkey Al Sheik, Eddie Hearn, all these so-called boxing fucking pundits, man, everybody out here. This was a robbery, Baval. He was screw, screw you, Bernard B. If you robbed Baval. Yo, shut the fuck up, man. He didn't get robbed. The fuck out of here. You know who got robbed? Fucking Oshaki Foster. He got robbed against that guy, Kinsesa. That's You know what? Throw the bullshit flag for that. But for this, don't throw nothing. If anything, throw your hands in the air. And wave them like you just don't care. Because that's what the fuck I'm doing. Throwing my hands up in the air. I'm popping goddamn bottles around here. It's a good ass fight. Does it warrant a rematch? Yeah. It does. That, 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 that shit. And I, I'll be honest with you. I don't think 12, 12 rounds was enough. To determine who the fuck really is the best light heavyweight. I just don't think so. I don't think so. That, that, that shit need to be 25 rounds. Like that. I, right now. Berta Bia can't sit here and say, I'm the best light heavyweight in the world. No, nah, he can't say that. That, that shit, he can't say that. Because, God damn, them do, they, they were in shape, man. And just see high level, like Daniel DeBall said, big, big time boxing, baby. Big, bo boxing, big time bo boxing, big time, big time boxing. Big, big time boxing, baby. That's what that shit was. Big time boxing. Absolutely amazing to see them guys. That's like watching Crawford and Marjamoff. Changes after changes, adjustment after adjustment, levels after levels, speed, power, angles. Like you can see resetting feet, getting back to the center of the ring, resetting again, lateral movement. That shit was crazy. But if you just a fucking a boxing fan who likes to watch it, but you don't understand what you're seeing, you're probably going to think. Somebody said, oh, that was a boring fight. It was very mundane. Hood champion, how dare you show excitement in, over this fight? Bullshit. I was like, yo, motherfucker, how could you get out of here? Tell me you a casual without telling me you a casual. Fuck out of here. Quit taking it to the stupid. That was a good fucking fight, man. But but I'll say this. For all of you lobster heads out there, that saying, well, now we know Baval and Berta Bia, well, they were hype jobs. David Benavidez, yeah, David Benavidez, he gonna put the bing bings on Berta Bia. David Benavidez would wash Dimitri Baval, yeah. David Benavidez, the Mexican monster. Hey, yo, you, Mick Nicholas, how about this? Hold your horses and stop taking it to the goddamn stupid. David Benavidez will beat Dimitri Baval. David Benavidez will put the bing bings on Berta Beers. Get out of here. Y'all acting like it was Joe versus Schmo in the fucking ring. Two special fighters doing special shit. That's why that shit went to a decision. Like, that... That, that was big-time big boxing, baby. <laughs> Demetri, D David Benavidez, 
I don't know how the fight would go because the best fighter doesn't always win. It's the fighter who boxes the best or the boxer who fights the best, however you want to say it. So does David Benavides stand a chance in there? I don't know, man. Let's see how he looks against David Morrell. But at 175 and he fought lesser opposition in Gavosnik, David Benavides looked like he was about to turn to Justin Timberlake and cry a fucking river up in there. How do you feel about the fight, David Benavides? I, I do. It's like, yo, my fucking sound like his vehicle backfiring. About to cry. Because he had he has high expectations for himself. But I'll tell you what, if he was about to cry after that Gavazdik win that he knew one more round he probably got stopped, he gonna goddamn jump off a bridge and land in a river of man eating crocodiles. You know, intentionally, if he fuck around with Baval and Bertabiev. Baval and Bertabiev is just different different animals, man. Different animals. But I would like to see Benavides get an opportunity. But unfortunately, and this is what I tell you. That boxing politics, I'm about to get ready to take my son out to this fucking place, man. So I'm going to give him five more minutes and I'm going to jump off. I could talk all day about this goddamn shit. Uh, with, with Benavidez boxing politics, they didn't get that man the Canelo fight that he earned, right? Talking about you belong at 175. That's that's Turkey on the sheet. So the, and the WBC and Secret Society and the key decision makers. Push that motherfucker to 175. Barely got past Gavazdik. Who knows what happens with Morrell? But if he does get past him... He's supposed to go straight into the uh, Baval or Berta B, uh, uh, the winner. So he should be fighting Berta Biev next. Now they're pushing for the rematch. Berta Biev and Baval. That means David Benavides is in the fucking breeze. So now after he be, if he beats Morrell, what's David Benavides going to fucking do? Fight Jesse Hart? What's he going to do? You see what I'm saying? They yanking the man's fucking chain. They jerking that man all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, that shit is bullshit to me. But anyway, Demetri Baval, his team, they've lost their right to complain. Ma, if you want to fucking, you know, attention, attention for everyone who's maybe fighters, right? Or want to be a fighter. If you want to fucking win a decision, take it out the judge's fucking hands. And and if you don't, if you, if, if, because you can't knock everybody out. If you can't do that, motherfucker. I'll throw your fucking opponent. Have we not learned anything in the last, over this past year, how the fuck these boxing matches go? Motherfuckers who out throw their opponents are getting the fucking nod. Simple. Unless you're Teofimo Lopez, Jermaine Ortiz. But Jermaine Ortiz moved around too much. He didn't let his hands go. But you got to let your fucking hands go. I don't care if you're throwing 20 punches and you land all 20. If that motherfucker's throwing 70, you in trouble, especially if he's landing just 15 or 12. It's going to give the perception that he's doing more. Anyway, I like Baval. I like the fact that he's like, I've been trained to not make excuses. I like that. That man is straight up goddamn, what's that, Rocky IV, whatever that was. I must kill him, man. all that shit. The Russian, like the motherfucker, him and Bernard Beef. You watch them dudes, it's like straight out of goddamn Rocky movie. Anyway. Two phenomenal fighters. I have nothing bad to say about Baval, nothing bad to say about Berta Beev, nothing. Nothing. That shit was big time, big time boxing, baby. Big, big time boxing. That's what that shit was. But I'm looking forward to that rematch. But in that rematch, let me tell you this. That means Berta Beev gets older. That means Berta Beev gets more fucking injuries. That means Berta Beev, more than likely, may lose that fucking rematch. Because Baval, that motherfucker showed me that it, it, he can turn it up, man. And, and Berta Beer was just pity patting. And then he even said something about think it could have been in my knee and wasn't my best performance. That motherfucker hit so hard. He hit so hard that even Baval said, I caught all of his punches on my gloves. Look at my face. That's from him hitting my glove and my hand hitting my face. That's how hard that motherfucker hits. Excuse me. They always say, with a puncher, the last thing to go is their fucking power. So this right here lets us know that shit George Foreman was doing when he came back, when he was out there forming, grilling, and goddamn potato wedging, big fucking bellying, that motherfucker, because he had that power. And that just lets you know, Roberto Beef will always be a fucking problem. Roberto Duran, that motherfucker fought for 30 years. Something about that power. When you have that kind of power, goddamn, that makes you a threat. So 
Burden Bill and Bavala rematch, again, you ask me, I don't know how it goes. But I will say, I think Burden Bill will be a year older. And, and maybe, just maybe, Bavall increases his punch output um, and goes on to get the, 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 the victory. Knockout, I don't know. But, but maybe then he can, we can have a clear victor. Uh, because right now, I'm telling you, in my opinion, in my, and this is just me scoring it, looking at it, I had that shit 8-4. Could be 7-5, because there was one round. I, was, I didn't know how to fuck this. I was like, God damn, that shit was so close. But 7-5, seven, seven, I think is, is more than fair. Because I'll be honest, there was one round where I was like, that's like a swing round to me. I didn't know how to score it. But 7-5, but 8-4, 7-5 is fair. 8-4, I think that's where you're giving the benefit of Every single benefit of the doubt to, to Burden BF. But the shit seemed pretty goddamn clear cut to me. But 7-5, whatever. Right? I'll say I'll say that. Okay, 7-5. But I had an 8-4. Anyway, keep cool. I'm about to take my little man out to go have some fun. Uh, I appreciate the support for this channel. Leave that donation for that fried rice and chicken wings. In the breeze.